Hey y'all, this is my unboxing and overview video of the AnchorMake M5C 3D printer. Now listen, I've had this little machine for quite a while now. I've gone through two rolls of filament and I can say that I'm impressed. I'm impressed with everything about this machine and I do recommend it to those looking to start their journey into 3D printing. In this video, you're not going to have a big fancy studio or workshop because it's not needed with this machine. Hang tight and let's go over it. All right, y'all, so I have just brought it in from it being delivered, and I have opened it up, and yeah, I did take a peek, you know, just to make sure that everything was in place and that nothing was damaged because we know how the delivery system can be. But anyway, this is what it looks like here. You have this protective foam here. Just take that out of the way. And then right there, you have your assembly guide, and there's not a lot of pieces to this. It is very straightforward, very easy to read, very easy to put together. This is, I've already looked at this. It looks so simple. And we're gonna figure out how simple it is here just in a few minutes. But there's your assembly guide and you can move that out of the way. And then you're gonna see the various pieces of the machine right here. Not a lot to it. So you have your little tool kit right here and all the pieces that you need, your power cord up there. But anyway, let's get this into the craft room and put it together. Okay, so this is one of the tables in my craft room, my raggedy table that has been with me for many years. And as you can see, I have all of the pieces laid out here. There's really not a lot of pieces to this. This is the base of the machine here. Right here is a little plate where your items will print. You have your power cord, your toolkit. There's your instructions over there. This actually holds your spool of filament. And then this is your main frame here with your extruder. Your extruder is the part that actually spits out the filament and prints it into the shape that you want. So yeah, you don't need a lot of space. As you can see, this is how big square the product actually is. You don't need a lot of space. I would suggest a sturdy table in case you have cats, dogs, and feral children running around that might bump it while it's doing its thing. This table is very sturdy, so I would not put it maybe like on a flimsy fold-out table. Put it on a nice sturdy table. So let's get it all put together, and I'm going to try to time myself to see how long it takes. All right, everybody, so here it is. Yes, there's a tapestry back here. I just have it pinned up out of the way because people don't like certain topics, so I have that pinned up. But anyway, this is it, all assembled. It was not difficult at all. Just take your time. Go with the instructions. Just go slowly. Now, this up here is where we're going to put our filament, and they were nice enough to send me two rolls of filament, okay? So it's all assembled. Basically, this frame part here just pops down into the base right here, okay then you flip it over on its side and you put the screws in the bottom to hold this in place you plug in your wires and then you set it back up plug your wires in here and you're also going to need to download the anchor make app on your phone device whatever that is what you're going to use to print you have to scan a qr code which is found on the back of this right here okay this right here there's a qr code on the back of that you scan that and that will connect the printer to your device so that they can communicate all right now this here this goes on the heat bed as you can see this is textured now a previous 3d printer that i have that i still have that i don't use because i don't like it anymore um it was very smooth like glass as you can see this is textured and that is going to help so much when it comes to your projects actually sticking to the heat bed it is also magnetic see it is magnetic so once you put this on there, it is really going to hold itself in place. Now for leveling the heat bed and everything you need to know, it's on these instructions right here. You go into the app and it will level the heat bed. Now my previous one, you had to do it manually. This one will automatically do it itself, which is very convenient. If you've had a 3D printer before, you know that can be a pain. But it is very convenient that it will do it itself. So I'm going to go do that and come back. So this has finished leveling and now your extruder has positioned itself to get ready to print. Now we have our filament up here and you use your handy dandy little clippers that come in your tool kit. You cut the end of your filament at an angle and then you just feed it into this tube. While you're doing that, you need to be holding this down, okay? You hold that clip down as you're feeding in your filament and then you're gonna feel some resistance once it hits down here. 
I will touch base again later on in the video talking about making sure you have the filament pushed down into the extruder. So now what we're doing, this is just the app. I'm going to open it up and I'm going to hit search. And then this right here where it says 3D Benchy, we're just going to select that. You're going to download it. There's like a little download button there. You just hit that download button. It's going to download the file to your device and then you can print it. I not only printed this file, but I also printed a lot of other really cool things that we're getting ready to see right here. Okay, y'all, I'm back. Listen, I have the machine running in the background. It's sort of like halfway across the room from me. So you can kind of judge and see about how loud it is. It's not really loud at all. It's not loud at all. It's not obnoxious. So it's not going to like drown out <laughs> anything in your home. But still, it's making enough of a noise where I would want it in a room separate, like from the rest of the house, like from your living room or whatever. It's just here in my craft room. Like I said, this video is not going to show you some big, huge, expensive studio space. I'm just here at home in my craft room. So it's running. You can see about how loud it is. Here are some projects that I have printed. And yes, my nails are different. Listen. Life can throw us some curveballs, and y'all know I've been hit with a lot of them over this past year, and I was hit with another one, and I just had to take a minute and step back and handle that, okay? So now I'm going to finish up the video. Let me show you these projects. After the projects, I want to have sort of like a sped up time-lapse video of a project from beginning to end actually printing on the machine, and while I'm showing you that part of the video, I'm going to answer some questions. If you follow me on social media, Instagram and Facebook, you know that I've already been posting some shorts showing you some projects that I've been making with the machine. And a lot of you have been asking questions. I will try to answer some of those questions at the end of this video when I'm showing you the time lapse of this little guy. So right here, this is your Benchy product. So what is a Benchy? It's just a fast and easy little file here created by the company to let you print out something to see you know how your machine works is everything calibrated is everything looking good so this little guy didn't take very long at all he took about 48 minutes i believe it was yeah 45 48 minutes somewhere in there just a cute little boat i also printed out this bookmark how cute is that just a cute little cat bookmark i have bookmarks all over the house but you can never have too many so I made this bookmark. Now this I did for a friend of mine that loves dragons. So this is a straw topper. You know what the straw toppers are, like with your reusable straws and your tumblers? It's just a little something to add a little something, something, a little bit of fun to your day. So you put this on your straw and then you just have a cute little dragon. Next we have this box. Oh, I love this thing. Okay, I love this thing. Why is it all red? Because that's the color that they sent me. But you know, you can buy tons of other colors of filament. And even if you don't like the color, guess what? You can paint it. Spray paint it. Paint it with acrylic paint. But you can paint it. Change a color. But anyway, look at this box. This coffin box. Because you know Halloween every day, baby. So this coffin box is just so awesome. And I was just so happy with this file here. Now, a lot of times when you're printing things like this, you'll have a bunch of filament in here that has printed in like a little zigzag pattern. I think I threw it away. But anyway... It's the stabilizers to stabilize the piece on your mat. So you would just peel that away, okay? And you're probably thinking, well, it's, it's jagged on the edge. It had all this stuff in the center. You just peel that away. And then your lid will fit perfectly down on your box here. This little thing right here, that was my boo-boo. <laughs> a cat was in here and I didn't realize it. Anyway, there's that box. And then we just have some cool toys for the kids. My kids love like those little fidget toys. But, you know, you can move back and forth. And you do not have to print this and then pop all the pieces together. It prints it in its entirety. And then you just pop it off the mat. And it is fully articulated. It's, it's already done for you. Like, look at the little joints here. It prints like that. There's no assembly. You don't have to put this together, okay? At least this file. You don't have to. It just, it just prints it like that. But is that not cute? My kids are going to love this. As of right now, they're both still asleep. But they're going to love that. And then we have this dragon. Look at this here. My oldest is going to love this because he likes dragons. Like I said, fully articulated. And it prints it right there on the mat. Like I said, there's no assembly. You just wait till it's done and then you just pop it off. But let's take a look at this up close. 
See how it's all just interlinked together. And this was a quick print. It says in the file title, it is a quick print, you know, so there are some ley lines going on here. But still, I think it is pretty cool. And this took, I believe it was three and a half hours to print. Just so cool. It's like my kid had seen something like this in a bookstore the other day, and it was like 25 bucks. I'm like, no, sir. And then I just made one myself. You know, it's so cool. But yeah, just tons of different colors of filaments. Like I said, if you only have like one color filament like this, I may go in and spray paint it black or something, you know, add on some purple highlights, something like that. You know, it's just something to play with. And they do have files for useful items as well. It's not all, you know, toys and stuff like that. Actual useful items, like things to organize your batteries. They have cat bowls, dog bowls, um, things to hang on the wall. You know, like those gravity hangers for your broom. You know, you just stick your broom in it and it holds your broom or mop on the wall. Yeah, you can print out all kinds of, of very useful items too. So it's not just stuff like this. But overall, compared to my other printers, I'm going to say printers because I had one that came from Joann's, like the Polaroid one. I don't really count that one because that was more of a toy. Um, I'm very happy with it so far. I'm very happy with it. Like I said, I've been printing out all these fun things. I've not had a problem with it. The only problem that I did have with it initially was when I fed in the filament from the top and you feed it all the way down until you hit resistance and you push the little clip to feed it in even further. You really have to push it in or the nozzle is not going to grab it and the extruder is not going to feed it through, okay? And looking around in Reddit forums, there's a handful of people that had that problem. It's really not a problem. You know, you just have to put a little bit of force behind it. So that was the only thing that I've seen, you know, so far. Um, I wish there was a scale up at the top where you hang your filament. I wish there was a scale that could tell you like how many ounces of filament you have left. One of my other printers has that and it's very helpful. It's a table mounted thing, but um, because this one is up in the air, I can't use that, but it would be, um, it would be very useful. But anyway, let me skip on over and we're going to take a look at this time lapsed video of printing out this little tugboat and I'm going to try to answer some questions. Okay, first question, do you have to have the app, such as on your phone or iPad, do you have to have the app in order to use the machine? Yes, you have to have the app. Can you use the machine just using your computer? You can print from your computer, but you have to have the app on your phone, device, whatever. You have to have the Anchor Make app to initially set up the machine and to do a lot of things. But yes, you can also print from your computer. You just have to have the app as well. So what programs do you need in order to use this printer? The Anchor Make app. The Anchor Make app pretty much has everything in it that you need in order to find files, download, print, everything that you need. It's pretty straightforward. You don't have to have all these external programs and all sorts of technical knowledge in order to use it. Like I said, it's absolutely wonderful for those just beginning their journey into 3D printing. So how would you compare this 3D printer to the performance of others? Okay, this is not like a big, huge, professional, hardcore 3D printer. That is not what this is designed to be. It is designed for home use, designed for the hobbyist, designed for someone who wants to get into 3D printing, but you don't have thousands and thousands of dollars to spend. So we're not going to compare it to those. I can give you advice on what I can compare it to. That's the two that I have, the smaller Polaroid and then the Ender 3. So as far as comparing it to the Ender 3, the print quality, I would say, is comparable. I mean, the quality is not that big of a difference for me to say, oh yeah, well, this machine, you know, rivals over this one. As far as the speed goes, the Anchor Make is indeed a lot faster. So, you know, you can print things out a lot more quickly than you can with the other machine. And for that, I, I much prefer the Anchor Make. Have you had any adhesion problems with this printer? So far, no. And you saw all the products that I printed. Now, I have had problems in the past with another printer, the uh, Polaroid one. You know, things just were not sticking to the print bed like they should. And that's called adhesion. You know, your item can pop off and slide around and then your filament's going to go everywhere and make a mess. I'm not having that problem here. Some people say they do, but I haven't. 
after so many prints, I say after three prints or so, you need to clean the little mat that your item's being printed on. Clean it with 91% alcohol, you know, just alcohol that you can get in the pharmacy. You clean your mat with that to make sure it is nice and clean. There's no oils from your fingertips or anything on there. Also, your room can't be too cold. If the room that you're printing in is cold, that really affects your adhesion. Your room needs to be decently warm. I'd say at least around 65. That is going to help tremendously. So make sure that your room is the correct temperature and make sure that you keep your little mat here clean. So do you have to use the files within the Anchor Make software in order to print? Can you use external files? Like if you purchase a file off of Etsy or something, can you use those files? Well, there is a USB-C slot only printer. Now, the printer, as you can see, it has no screen on it like the M5 did. It has no screen. But what you can do is you can take your files from your USB, just stick it in the USB-C slot, and you still control it from your phone, okay? You still have to use your phone in order to control the printer when you're using something like that. Can you use that slot to plug your computer in? No. It is a USB-C slot. You know, you can use that for, you know, your external drives, but you cannot plug your computer directly into the printer. Okay. I hope that answered some of your questions. Now, I also meant to show you this a while ago, but it comes with this 10-pack nozzle kit. Sometimes your nozzle can get clogged, depending you know, like on the type of filament you're using. And sometimes if your temperatures are off, you will get a little bit of clogging. But anyway, here's this set of nozzles. Like I said, it's a 10-pack. I've got paint or something on me. I don't know. But anyway, you can switch out your nozzles if you experience the nozzle clogging. Now, can you use PETG with this? Of course. I mean, it's a 3D printer. Of course, it can use different types of filaments. Now, for this, I did have a spool of white PETG from my other printer and I use it on this one just to see and I had to adjust the temperature of course it melts and needs a higher heat in order to melt so for the nozzle setting I put that at 240 degrees and I set the bed to 75 degrees and it gave me pretty good results um, with this particular brand of PETG filament that I had I would probably set the temperature up just a little bit higher about 250. I didn't have any excessive extruding or anything like that which I probably would set it up a little bit higher and I'll show you why. I did have a little bit of rippling down here. I mean, it's not that noticeable, but you know, if you want your items to be perfect, and it's gonna be setting like this, you're not gonna see it. But um, I may would set that up at just a little bit higher temp, probably the nozzle at about, you know, 250 and maybe bump up the bed to about 80. That's just my experience. And my room temperature was about 65 degrees. But anyway, I had a little bit of rippling here. Um, a little bit of threading on the inside. I mean, not really bad. Any 3D printing, you can expect a little bit of threading. But this cute little cat bowl here is available in the Anchor Make app. It's just another one of the cool files that they have available. I printed it in white, and then I just colored it in, and I got a little smudgy right here. Um, I just colored it in. I'm making it worse. <laughs> I'll let it get a cotton swab with some alcohol or something and get that little bit of paint off. But um, I just printed it and then I colored it in with a black pen and um, there's that. So that's really cute. And then I also printed out this little stand here to hold my batteries. Isn't this cute? This little, um, this little carton here to hold my batteries. Now here's a product that I wanted to show you that I had painted. Because I told you that, you know, earlier, if you don't like the color that you can paint it, this is a skull. I think it was called Fancy Skull. Again, it's a file within the Anchor Make app. And I spray painted it. Now, the Anchor Make brand filament, the paint is holding pretty well. I mean, I banged it around a little bit and my paint's not chipping. I have used some filaments previously with my other machine where the paint would just chip right off of it. Their filament is pretty good. The paint is sticking. Um, it seems to be pretty sturdy. I printed out some toys for the kids and they haven't broken them yet. So, um, uh, you know, that's pretty good. And there's a cat hair. Pretty good as far as that goes. But, um... When you're printing out toys and stuff for the kids, of course, don't let them slam it around or something because they will break it. You know, just use it wisely, I guess you could say. Because that was another question that I forgot to answer earlier. How sturdy are the toys? Don't let them slam it around. But this is just a skull that I had painted. And I think I'm going to go back maybe with some rub and buff. If you're a crafter, you know what that is, some rub and buff just to bring out some of the designs. But um, I'm pretty happy with it. Like I said, overall, I'm pretty happy with the machine. Would I recommend it? Yes, I would. 
Um, so look down in the description box and in the comments, I'm going to have some useful links for you. And if you would, please give this video a thumbs up, click subscribe, check me out on other forms of social media, the links to all of which will be in the description box down below. And I will see y'all later. Bye.